So I just voted, but now what am I supposed to do? Sharing God's love in the digital world and encouraging others to live by faith. This is Joshua Verwers. It finally stopped ringing. Hey y'all, Joshua Verwers here. Thanks for stopping by and joining me today because I've got something I really, really, really wanna to talk to you guys about. Now, if you're new to this channel, what I try to do is each and every week bring you some content that will provide some information and inspiration to help you live by faith. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and ring the little bell notification so that YouTube will notify you each and every time we upload a new video. All right, so the elections are over, the results are in, and about half of America is frustrated and angry because who they were hoping to vote for did not make it in. I don't know if that's actually statistically accurate. I was just looking at our races here in Iowa and saying most of them were at about that, you know, 50, 55%. So I just assume about half of us. And I'm also able to just open up my eyes and look on Facebook and Twitter and see just how many people are just going off on the way that these elections panned out. And then I got to thinking about this because most of my friends list, at least on Facebook, are actually Christians. And yet I see so much arguing, so much complaining, even when the people that they wanted wind up winning. So I wondered, are they reading the same Bible that I am? <laughs> and then I figured it out. They must be reading a different translation. You see, I was able to sit here and flip through my Bible and figure this out because I went to the book of Philippians and when I got in here, Philippians chapter two, verse 14, and if I could, I'm gonna go ahead and use this out of the world translation that people seem to be using. Do all things with complaining and disputing so that you can become blameless and harmless children of God. <laughs> yeah, that's not how this actually reads. In my New King James, it says, do all things without complaining, without disputing, without grumbling, without whining, so then you can become these blameless children of God. Why do we always do the opposite of what the Bible tells us to do? I know, because we want to be God. Was that a little harsh? But seriously. Okay, so the person that you voted for didn't win. Who cares? Hey, newsflash people, it really doesn't matter who is sitting in the state house or who's sitting in the White House when you know that he, Jesus Christ, is sitting on the throne. We shouldn't be worshiping the DNC or the GOP, but rather our G-O-D. It's all about the lion and the lamb, not the elephant and the donkey. Man, I could just keep on going with these. Can you tell that I'm in Iowa, the hotbed of political activity? I hope we've actually read the end of the book and, spoiler, we win! So it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things how one individual election plays out. How we respond to that election does matter. And that's where we need to be very careful about what we're saying, what we're tweeting, what we're posting. Because that's going to really locate where our hearts are truly at. What we wind up doing is the exact opposite of what God has told us to do because God actually tells us what to do in his word if we will just look at his word. So look at this real quick. First Timothy chapter two, therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority. In context, this is really telling us that we need to be praying for our governmental officials. We should be praying for them instead of posting about them. Can you imagine how your outlook of them would change when all of a sudden you were praying that God would bless them, that God would help them, that God would reveal himself to them? that God would somehow make it possible that they could have an intimate relationship with him? 
can you imagine how your mind, how your perspective would change when you were praying for them as an individual that Jesus laid his life down for? Because that's what he did. And so I just want to encourage you guys, instead of letting your fingers do all of the talking, how about you let your spirit do the praying? And how about you pray for them through the eyes of Christ, the one who laid his life down for all men? Now, I hope that video blessed you. I hope it was really a source of encouragement and also challenged you, maybe in your way of thinking and then acting as well. If it did, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up, like it. You can also share it with a friend that you think might benefit from it as well. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you can do so by tapping my face right here. And you can also check out another little video right about here. And until next time, I just want to encourage y'all, stay blessed and enjoy God's best.